Hello there, I am Snuff Anybody, and I'm here to do a little snuff review, uh, have a little chat with you about uh, the tricks I've picked up uh, in my first year of snuffing, uh, and I will also probably be talking a wee bit about daily snuffs all day, every day. Uh, but to the review, I will be reviewing Listen of Sharrow's Tom Bok, my basically favorite daily snuff. This is my stable. Uh, I pretty much use this every damn day. Uh, so I'm uh, breaking up uh, virgin tin for you so we can be sure to have uh, the right experience. Uh, as it's being a completely full tin I'm just tapping it flat against the surface of the table to get it evened out. But uh, let's have a look at the snuff. Okay. Here's the tin of snuff, just to show you what will happen when we open one of these tom box. And as you can see, the snuff is overflowing the edges, but I have weighed a tin of tom box and the tin, and it turns out you get 1.1 overweight, and you always get overweight with Wilson of Sharrow. I have already tipped on a pile of the snuff. And we'll go a wee bit closer. There we are. As you can see, it is... Yeah, it's just brown. Medium, medium brown. Slight... Ah, it's just medium brown. Okay, the grind is... Fine. Fine. Fine to medium. More on the fine side. Moisture-wise, this completely fresh tin is medium. And this, this is just how Tom Bok looks. So, had a look at it. Let's see how it works in the nose, mates. Okay, my friends, we've had a look at the snuff. Uh, we'll do the usual little thing about the tin notes. Bergamol, lots and lots of bergamol. Fresh tin, so there's the tiniest bit of ammonia. But it is basically tiny, almost not present in this tin. Behind the bergamot, there is sweet leather. Sweet leather and bergamot. There is also a sort of earthy scent. Yeah, but this was it is. But let's have a pinch. And this was also not only my favorite, but this was also my first SP. Which is which is what what Tom Bach is. Um, I found it damn hard to sniff the first time I had it. Mostly because of the grind, because it is fine. And what I found out there is, when you have a pinch, you get this. You get that little brownie stains on your fingers. I use that to kind of prime my nose. Hold on to your pinch, give your nose a little prime, so you just have a tiny little bit of snuff going on. Oh, I don't know if I've got a tiny bit of snuff going on on my nose. But as soon as you got this tiny little bit of snuff going on in the nose, kind of primed it, made it ready, you can just jam snuff up there. And in my experience, it doesn't matter if it's a finely milled SP. If it's a six photo cheetah, 41 photo elephant, American uh, scorches, Irish toasts, it doesn't matter. When you prime your nose and kind of just tell your nose what is going to go on here, the pinch will be so much easier. But back to Tom Bach. In the nose. What you get is you get bergamot, 
and you get lots and lots of bergamot, and it's it's that kind of citrusy, fresh bergamot that you get in a cup of Earl Grey. It's very there, it's, it's in your face. And it's first when the bergamot kind of recedes, going on three, three to five minutes. Then you start to get the leather, then you start to get the tobacco flower. But initially, you get bergamot. And yes, there is a burn, a slight burn, kind of like a tingle. That's my opinion. And even though you can feel, you put your pinch just right. The bergamot scent feels like it's going all the way up into your sinuses. And it clears up. It opens up your nose like no menthol will ever do. If I'm clocked in my nose, I will try a bergamot first before I go to an L L260 or uh, 666. Always try bergamot first. Which is one of the little things I've picked up. First I was told, use menthol. Use medicated snuffs. No, 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 no. Use SPs. They will do the trick for you. And they will also cleanse your nose if you're trying to switch from a strong, strong snuff to a weaker snuff in scent wise, use a good damn pinch of bergamot high snuff. It will clear your nose, it will kind of give you that cleansing feeling. The nicotine level of Tom Bok is slightly under medium. Yes it is. I would give it a 4 on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is nothing and 10 is called the bloody nurse. Um, the scent is strong for five minutes. It's there for 10 minutes and then it's gone, completely gone. And time to refresh. Cause as I'm saying, this is my all day, everyday snuff. I can't get enough of it. And if you're ever wondering, what's the thing uh, people talking about uh, Queen's Extra Strong? Well, Wilson of Shero once had two different brands of snuff, one called Tom Buck and one called Queen's Extra Strong. And they were damn close to each other. Originally, there was a leaf difference. There was, I think, I've uh, read up on this on the net, uh, five to 10% more uh, white Virginia tobacco in Queen's Extra Strong and somewhere in the 1840s that changed. So Queen's Extra Strong and Tom Bok became the same thing, just branded differently. Because some would never ever dream about buying a tin of Queen's Extra Strong. Me. And some would never dream about buying the Tom Bok. It's just an opinion, but it's the same damn snuff. There isn't anything different. I've had the, uh, the tin of Queen's Extra Strong Sniffed it, no worries, but it's Tom Buck that's in the tin. Giving this a rating will be no surprise to nobody. I'm giving this a perfect 5 out of 5 on the squinty scale. Because brilliant, lovely snuff and there's nothing wrong with it. If you do want your Tom Buck to have a wee bit extra nicotine strength, uh, you can uh, take my little advice. I will add up to 20% of uh, Toke Rustica to uh, the mix. Let it sit for a day or maybe rehydrate it just a tiny bit because there is a moisture difference in Rustica and in Tom Bok. The Rustica is a bit more dry. So rehydrate your Rustica and mix them up and you'll get a perfectly nicotine snuff. Uh, if you're looking for something in the 6-7 uh, scale. <laughs> and on that note, I can tell you about the back drip on Tom Buck. Because <coughs> there is a back drip. If you stuff your nose full of any kind of snuff, you will get a back drip when you sniff. The Tom Buck back drip is initially just a wee bit chlorine. But it isn't a problem. It's 
like any kind of snuff, when it first hits the back of your throat, you will feel the tobacco powder there. But I love it. And the nicotine scale is always centered on what I get in my nose. Because you will get as much nicotine in the back drip as you get from the initial pinch or the insufflation. So I basically never blow up my snuff because I'm a nicotine junkie and I want both the hits. And I'm perfectly content with Tombok. I highly recommend it to anyone who loves bergamot. It is, as far as I know, and I've tried, the strongest bergamot uh, scented snuff out there. No comparison. It is the only snuff that's just bergamot. Lots of bergamot. It's super delicious. Please try it. Please subscribe. Please comment down below here. And uh, I'll be back any day soon. Goodbye. Have a nice day.